What is going on guys? Welcome back to another helpful tips video for level 3 skillers. If you have not seen the first video, 10 tips for level 3 skillers, I will have a link to that down below in the description. Anyways guys, let's go ahead and get on into these tips. The first tip of the video is where you should be fly fishing. There are many different fly fishing areas throughout RuneScape and fly fishing is one of the best fishing methods on a level 3 skiller so it's definitely important to know where you should be doing it. The best place to do this is actually at the farming guild located within Zaya. The best way to actually get here would be by utilizing the skills necklace straight to the farming guild. The reason why this is the best fishing spot for fly fishing is because there's the least amount of fishing spots that it can actually move to and the distance between the fishing spots are very minimal. This means that there's going to be more experience per hour and a lot less tedious when you are fly fishing. On top of all of this, you're right outside the farming guild, which means you can easily do a farming run in between your fishing gains for some easy money from herb runs or just some good farming experience overall. Tip number two for this video is going to be which skills you should prioritize achieving 99 in first. These are the four capes that I believe should be attained first, which is crafting, farming, construction, and runecrafting. And I will be talking about why I believe each one of these capes should be obtained first as they help you progress in other skills afterwards. First thing I will be talking about is runecraft. Now why I believe this should be prioritized over other skills is because the experience you gain in crafting as well as mining during your Zaya runecrafting journey from levels 77 to 99. Now most people do blood runes the entire way and if this is the case then from level 77 to 99 you should expect to achieve 1.9 million crafting experience as well as 1.42 million mining experience on top of your runecrafting journey. Now this is a significant amount of experience and can tremendously affect how long it will take you to achieve 99 in crafting and mining as well, making it a very good skill to prioritize before you achieve 99 mining or 99 crafting. Now this next one kind of contradicts the first one that I talked about and that is getting 99 crafting first. Now if you choose to get 99 crafting before runecrafting like I mentioned previously, this can help you on your journey from 1 to 77 runecrafting, which a lot of people find pretty difficult. This can also help you in other areas as well because the skill cape allows you to have one of the closest teleports to a bank and it's unlimited. Now like I mentioned before, this is extremely useful when you are doing things such as lava runecrafting or anything during your playtime that just requires you to make a quick bank and return back to your skilling. Now the only reason why I'm mentioning the farming cape is because it gives a good alternative to the crafting cape. It allows you to also have a relatively close bank location from your teleport, however it's nowhere near as close as the crafting cape allows you to obtain. As I mentioned this is only listed on here as an alternative to the crafting cape. And finally I will be talking about the construction cape. Now this allows unlimited teleports directly to your POH as well as every single house portal located throughout RuneScape. This can be extremely useful especially for a level 3 as your only other alternatives is to buy tablets which could add up to be quite costly considering how much you would need to teleport around RuneScape. Also in your POH you will have access to things such as the jewelry box as well as mounted amulets making this that much more better. Moving on to tip number three. Now this one might be known to a lot of you however I have found out that a lot of people truly don't know about this. And I must say I did not know about this method until I was well over 90 construction as I really don't pay attention to these updates. But I'm talking about the money's servant bag. Now this is really helpful when you are training construction within your POH. Almost every method as a normal account requires the service of a butler. And after a few trips to the bank of course they're going to ask you a small fee to pay for their services. Now when they do this this actually takes a couple of extra dialogue steps to get through which significantly decreases your XP per hour. Not only that, but it gets you out of the groove of your training. Now to eliminate this process altogether, all you have to do is put a servant's money bag into the corner space of your bedroom located in your POH. It requires 58 construction to build and holds up to 3 million GP, which will automatically pay the servant while they perform their tasks. This saves you the extra dialogue steps as well as an extra inventory space which might come in handy as well. So I highly recommend utilizing this whenever you find yourself training construction in your POH. Moving on to tip number four which I will be covering the bottomless compost bucket. 
Now this is a compost bucket that only requires one inventory space and can hold up to 10,000 uses of any type of compost you put into it. However, it only requires half of that amount to actually fill it up. Meaning if you put 5,000 ultra compost into the bucket, it acts as if you had 10,000 of them, which is extremely helpful and saves a ton of money in the long run when you truly think about it. You can also store this bucket in any tool leprechaun just as you would any other bucket. Between these saved inventory spaces as well as the extra money that you would be spending, I highly recommend using this when you are doing your farm run. This next tip is extremely useful when you are training thieving during pickpocketing. Some of you might recall back in the day when you could just pickpocket endlessly without ever having to stare at your screen, and it truly was an extremely AFKable skill. Unfortunately, they've since released coin pouches, which means you can only successfully pickpocket an NPC 28 times before you have to look back at your screen and open up your coin pouches to continue pickpocketing. This can become extremely tedious when you are trying to just relax in AFK like you could back in the day. The most tedious part about it is you never really can tell when you are at full coin pouches, so you're constantly looking at your screen to see if you need to open up your pouches to continue pickpocketing. However, if you are utilizing the RuneLite client, as I'm sure most of you are, there's actually a way to notify you when you have reached 28 coin pouches in your inventory. This is done by utilizing the plugin chat notifications, and by utilizing the highlighted word coin, RuneLite will notify you when you attempt to pickpocket with a full inventory of pouches. Because when you do this, it sends a message in your chat using the word coin, which then sends a notification to your computer notifying you that you are full inventory. This makes it extremely useful when you are trying to AFK, because you don't have to constantly look at your screen to see if you have reached 28 pouches yet. Instead, RuneLight will notify you when you've reached 28 and you can easily look back at your screen, click on the pouches, and continue to AFK. Here is a quick example of what it will sound like when RuneLight sends a notification telling you that you are full on coin pouches. Tip number six, I will be talking about skiller pitfalls. And what I mean by skiller pitfalls is ways that you can accidentally obtain combat experience ruining your level 3 account. First and probably the most obvious way to avoid this is just by turning off your auto retaliate. A lot of you accidentally forget to turn this off and when you're casually walking through runescape and get attacked by an NPC, your character then attacks back and accidentally obtains some combat experience. And this can easily be avoided with a simple click of a button. Another thing that happens quite often is accidentally attacking an NPC when you're traveling through runescape. You can simply avoid this by going to your settings and switching the NPC attack options to hidden. This removes the option to attack any NPC, and if you pair this alongside turning off your auto retaliate, it completely assures that you'll never attack an NPC again until you change those settings again. Another way to accidentally obtain combat experience is by training in the Pyramid Plunder minigame. Within the minigame, there are sarcophaguses, or just mummy caskets otherwise known, where if you open these, you would actually obtain strength experience from opening them. This is the only dangerous thing to interact with that actually obtains combat experience within the minigame. Everything else you are completely fine with interacting with. A way to accidentally obtain magic experience is through the Archaeus Library when you are obtaining Zaya Favor. Now this is also a rune crafting training method for many level 3s, especially Iron Man, but when you are doing this method, you are required to turn in books and in return you obtain an experience book that you can either put into magic or rune crafting. Now a lot of times people accidentally put this book into magic instead of rune crafting and they accidentally get that magic experience they weren't hoping for. An easy way to avoid this is by disabling your one key through your keyboard program if you are able to, or I like to also just remove the key from my keyboard. This way I don't accidentally hit a key that I don't want to end up hitting. By doing this you are only able to click the to button and you avoid using your mouse at all costs so you don't accidentally click on magic rather than rune crafting and this way it's almost impossible to achieve magic experience. Another way to accidentally obtain combat experience on your account is by speaking to the information clerk in the Varrock Museum after achieving 150 kudos. If you have over 150 kudos and speak to her, she will reward you with prayer experience. And this might not be something you want to actually achieve. Most players who have completed the majority of the display fossils down in the basement of the Varrock Museum have well over 150 kudos. So just be mindful of that the next time you are talking to NPCs throughout the Varrock Museum. 
A quick bonus tip for you guys if you have completed any of the following quests shown on screen now and head to the Varrock Museum on the second floor and speak to the historian, he will reward you a thousand experience antique lamps for each one of the quests that you have completed and you can utilize this in any skill over level 20. The last pitfall that you have to be mindful of is when you are doing the observatory quest. Your account has a 1 in 3 chance of actually achieving combat experience when completing the quest. Fortunately enough, you are actually able to see whether or not your account will receive the reward that gives combat experience simply by looking through the telescope at the end of the quest. When looking through the telescope, you are supposed to observe the constellations, and 4 of the 12 constellations give combat experience. The 4 that give combat experience is Aries, Capricorn, Leo, and Virgo. If you have one of these four, then you need to stop doing the quest immediately and do not talk to the professor again to avoid getting any combat experience. You won't be able to complete the quest, however, it's really not that necessary unless you are trying to get to Fossil Island, and even if you are trying to do that, there are other ways to do so. The next tip that I would like to give you guys is during your herb lore training. When doing herb lore, I highly encourage you guys to utilize the Amulet of Chemistry. If you don't know what this is, this is an amulet that provides a 5% chance of creating a 4-dose potion rather than a 3-dose potion when you are brewing potions. Each amulet has 5 charges and only costs around 1k per amulet, but what it gives you in return is well worth it. When looking at prayer potions, for example, the difference between a 3-dose potion and a 4-dose potion is well over 1000 GP, which is what the cost of the amulet is. Over time, this will save you a decent amount of money while training Herblor, which is why I put it into this video. Tip number 8, I will be talking about the Celestial Ring. This is a ring that is rewarded from the Shooting Stars activity. If you don't know what this is, Shooting Stars are randomly placed around Gilinor and you have to mine them for Stardust, which can be turned into Desori's Star Shop located in Falador, right above the Mining Guild. When you are wearing this ring, it applies an invisible plus 4 boost to your mining level. This is super helpful when you are training your mining, especially considering level 3 skillers don't have access to the Dragon Pickaxe Special. On top of the invisible boost, it also has a 1 in 10 chance of giving an extra ore when mining rocks up to adamant. Achieving 2000 stardust for the ring does not take very long at all. It should only take you around 4-5 to five shooting stars depending on the tier that you find. I highly encourage you guys take the time to do this because it will help you tremendously during your mining training. If you guys found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button down below. It really does help out the YouTube channel. And if you truly want to help me out, you can become a part of the Templar gang by hitting that join button down below. What this does is it gives you a special rank in the in-game clan chat as well as a special icon next to your name on the YouTube comments. There's also a few other benefits listed down below when you hit join, but most importantly, you're supporting me and helping this channel grow. Thanks again guys, and I'll see you next time.